Hey, welcome to Electra Online, and here we're going to talk about what we call phase changes. And we're going to start out with the phase change from, from liquid to gas, or in the case of water, it'll be from liquid to vapor. Water doesn't really turn into a gas until it reaches several hundred degrees uh, above the boiling point. So actually, uh, water turns from liquid into vapor, and we'll talk a little bit more about when it turns into gas later on. Some liquids turn directly from a liquid directly into a gas. So what does that mean when something vaporizes, when something turns from a liquid into a vapor? Well, it turns out for water, when the water is, is uh, subjected to an atmospheric pressure of one atmosphere, so standard pressure, and the temperature reaches a temperature of 100 degrees centigrade, it begins to boil, and the boiling effect then has, uh, the effect of boiling then has that the water turns from liquid into vapor. And that happens at 100 degrees centigrade at one atmosphere. When the atmospheric pressure drops, it happens at a lower temperature. And the way you turn water into vapor is you must add heat. You must give the molecules kinetic energy to turn from a liquid state into a vapor state. And the reason for that is that the molecules, they have these intermolecular forces that kind of keep the molecules together. If it gets cold enough, they form a solid lattice phase. But if, it's, if the um, temperature is high enough, the liquid, the the water will be a liquid, and the molecules will still have these cohesive forces between them, keeping the molecules together in a liquid form. So it kind of roll over each other like marbles would. But if you give the molecules enough energy, they will actually have enough, enough energy to jump free from one another and then turn into a vapor phase that will then leave the liquid and turn into a vapor. And we can make that happen when we make water boil at 100 degrees centigrade, um, add heat, continue to add heat to it, and more and more water will turn into vapor. The amount of heat that it requires to do that is 40,790 joules per mole. Water requires a lot of heat to turn it from water into vapor, which means that it requires a lot of energy, and that means that typically the molecules hold fast, they hold together quite a bit by the intermolecular forces. Remember that, the that water has those two hydrogens, and oxygen is a very polar molecule, and so there's this very strong hydrogen bonding between the molecules that prevent them from escaping from one another, so it does require a lot of heat to do so. But there's a little bit more to actually understanding how water turns into a vapor. So, for example, let's say that water is at some temperature, a lower temperature, well below the boiling point of water. Does some of the water still turn into vapor? And the answer is yes. Water still evaporates even at lower temperatures. So how does that happen? Well, it turns out that the molecules in the water have a what we call kinetic energy, and they don't all have the same kinetic energy. There's a kinetic energy distribution. Some molecules have a little, very little kinetic energy. Some molecules have a lot of kinetic energy. That has a lot to do with the way the molecules kind of bump into each other. And sometimes a molecule get bumped, get so much kinetic energy that it exceeds a certain threshold enough for it to jump free from the liquid. And so that's what uh, evaporation is. These are molecules that then jump free from the liquid, turn from a liquid into a vapor. But at the same time, you could have water molecules in the atmosphere, or if this is inside a container like this, there could s simply be water molecules floating around, and through the normal action of water molecules flying around, of course in vapor format, they will bounce into the water and resubmit themselves into the water, so turn back into a liquid. So we have this exchange where we have vaporization of water molecules jumping free because they have enough kinetic energy and other molecules coming back down, turning back into water. And at some point that may be in equilibrium. So the same number of molecules per unit time per second, for example, leave the water as enter the water, then that's a balance, that's an equilibrium, and we call that a dynamic equilibrium. When the evaporation and the condensation, we call that condensation, where vapor turns back into liquid, when that is in equilibrium, we have what we call the equilibrium vapor pressure. That happens at a certain amount of pressure. Now what happens, well here I have a good diagram for that, so let's say that at some temperature T1, the rate of evaporation is constant. So the evaporation happens at a constant amount at a particular temperature. If you lower the temperature, the rate of evaporation will decrease. If you raise the temperature, the rate of evaporation will increase. At the same time, the, the rate of condensation will depend upon how many molecules are in the atmosphere, how many water molecules in vapor format are in the atmosphere. The more molecules we have, the more will redeposit themselves, and so then it comes closer and closer to the rate of evaporation. So at first, if there's no molecules in the, in the atmosphere, uh, water molecules, then the rate of condensation will be zero, 
and as molecules is evaporating, the number of molecules in the atmosphere increase, the condensation begins to increase, and you can see how that rate then increases, and eventually it will reach the same level as the rate of evaporation, and we have then reached dynamic equilibrium. What happens when you increase the temperature of the water? Well, that means you give more kinetic energy to the water molecules, so the distribution resettles itself. You can now see that way more uh, water molecules now have enough kinetic energy to jump free. You can see that the evaporation rate has increased. If the, if the condensation rate is where it was before, you can then see that there will be more molecules going into the, into the air or into the container. Less molecules will come back into the water. And so what you now have is you have a new rate of evaporation at a new temperature T2. But as soon as that happens, let's say that happens at this point right here, even though you had reached a dynamic equilibrium, what's going to happen now is that the rate of condensation is going to begin increasing again as you're putting more and more molecules into the atmosphere, and so you'll have an, an additional increase like this, and you'll reach a new dynamic equilibrium at a new rate. So more molecules will be evaporating, more molecules will be condensing. Another effect of that is, let's say that this is happening just in the atmosphere, we see that the, that the partial pressure of the vapor, the water vapor in the atmosphere, can actually increase as a percentage of the total pressure in the atmosphere. We'll talk a little bit more about that. That's called the partial pressure of the water vapor in the atmosphere. And you can see that that also increases with temperature to such an extent that when the temperature reaches 100 degrees, let's say the air temperature reaches 100 degrees, water can continue to evaporate into the atmosphere until 100% of the pressure is the pressure due to the water vapor. So that's kind of interesting. That also happens to coincide with the boiling point of water. And in some next videos, we'll give you some more detail of how that works. So that gives you a kind of a, a quick introduction to the basics of evaporation and the basics of the phase change from liquid to vapor. And in the next several videos, we'll go into the, each of the parts in more detail so you can see how exactly that works and you'll be able to calculate the partial pressure or the vapor pressure at various temperatures with the equations that I'll show you. There you go. There's the basics.